My father came forward and testified for you, but I can't forget the fact that he's accused you for some, of so many things without any proof. I mean, he even admitted on the stand that he was guilty of that. Darling, sometimes it's, it's difficult to be objective about someone that you've been so close to. As, as with your father, your objectivity gets blurred. And I will admit that in the past, I felt persecuted by your father, too. But now I'm beginning to believe that it's all part of the same impulse that brought him to Judge Palmer's chambers yesterday, an almost driven need to see justice done. And I have to respect that. Well, I'm not sure what I feel about No, I called his office this morning to thank him, but his secretary said he was out of town on business. Well, I'm sure he'll be back in time for Grandma's get-togethers tonight. I know how important family is to you. If you want to change your mind about going to bed. Look, I'll let Emily get the door. I'd really like to finish this before Alan Michael gets up and oh. Good morning. Oh, Ross, hello. Hello, Ross. Can I get you some coffee? Yes, yes, please. Sir. Ross, how's Kelly doing now that she's staying with Jackie and Justin? Ah, uh, well, I see even less of her now than uh, when she was in the hospital. Like last night, for instance, she had dinner in her room again. Although Jackie said that uh, she talked to Philip for a good deal of time. Philip sounded all right when I spoke to him on the phone. How did he seem to you? Well, he seemed fine. Uh, he had some questions about the hearing, which I tried to explain, including the part about Mike coming forward to testify. Yes, I called Mike's office. Uh, the secretary said that he was out of town. Do you know where he's gone? Yes, he went to Milwaukee to do a favor for me, check up some things on the Kerry Todd case. He'll be back later today. Ross, do you have any idea when Judge Palmer might reach your decision? Oh, uh, yes. Actually, that's why I came here this morning. She called me a little while ago, and uh, she said she's going to talk to us right after the Christmas weekend. It arrived from Ms. McKenzie this morning. Just as something has on every holiday for the past several years. And they all come with a card signed, Love Carrot. Mm -hmm. You say uh, she used to come here a lot and visit Ms. McKenzie when she lived in Milwaukee? Oh, yes. Two or three times a week. She'd sit by Miss Mackenzie's bed for hours, talking quietly to her, knowing that it was hopeless, that she'd never understand. I used to tell Miss Anderson that it was uh, futile, but that never discouraged her. Yeah. I find it awful hard to believe that she never told anybody what her relationship was to Miss Mackenzie. Oh, she offered nothing about herself, even though I saw her quite a bit. You know, when Mr. Marler phoned and uh, told me you'd be here this morning, I couldn't help wondering why, since Mr. Marler knows now about Mrs. McKenzie's condition. Yes, well, he found out a couple of things since he was here, and he's tied up on a very important case, so asked me to come on, uh, on and check it out for him. Uh, listen, I have a picture here I'd like to look at. Uh, this gentleman's name is Joe Bradley. He's one of the two people that Carrie Todd uh, Anderson has uh, confessed to killing. Has he been here to visit Mrs. McKenzie? No, I've never seen him. Do you know what Mrs. McKenzie's uh, given name is? Yes, it's Emma. Emma. Hmm. How about her middle name? Do you know that? <laughs> the initial L is all I can remember. However, I can uh, check in the records. If no, you no, that's not necessary. Uh, just that uh, Mr. Marler found a notation in Joe Bradley's notebook, notebook about a T. McKenzie. Does that ring a bell to you? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bauer. I'm afraid not. As far as I know, Miss McKenzie has no other family. Hmm. All right. Well, I, I have one. It's a long shot, I know, but I have another picture here. Uh, this was found among uh, Carrie Anderson's things. Uh, that picture of this young man. Now, do, do you recognize him at all? No, I've never seen him either. <laughs> but he does bear a remarkable resemblance to Mr. Marler, doesn't he? Oh, amazing. So, yeah, we're all struck by that. <laughs> is presented by Bold 3 Detergent Plus Full Strength Fabric Softener. And by Ivory, there's a pure, natural kind of clean when you lather up with ivory. Mm, sorry that happened.
welcome, Morgan. Well, we still brought back some wonderful memories. I just wish I could have listened to Kelly. I guess all that flattery went to my head. Ah, uh, you're not, not the first person that ever happened to. You know what? You're not going to be the last, well, either. I promise you it's never going to happen again. Morgan! <laughs> Welcome home. Hi, Jack. Thank you. How was your trip? It was wonderful. We went to a lot of the places that you left on the list, and they were all great. Good, good. God, and with that tan you brought back, you're going to be more of a standout in Springfield than ever. <laughs> Hi, Hillary. I didn't mean to ignore you. Well, that's all right. I don't expect any compliments on my winter pallor. <laughs> Listen, I was supposed to meet Floyd here, but he's all tied up with, uh, with his job. How about if I buy you a welcome home cup of coffee? Oh, thanks. I'd love to, but I have to go down to pediatrics. You're not... No, uh, no, I wish I were, but um, I'm, since I was, wasn't here to organize the children's Christmas party, I'm going to go down now and help Katie out. Hmm. But I'm sure I'll see you over the holidays. I hope so. Uh, listen, are you going to meet Mrs. Bowers tonight? Uh, yes, I think Kelly and I are going. Well, Trish was invited, and Mrs. Bauer very kindly asked her if she would drag me along. So, uh, <laughs> since I know that you and Kelly are going to be there, I might just show up after. Great. Right. See you then. Okay. Hey, you know, uh, I really enjoyed those dances we had the other night. I hope Derek didn't mind my cutting in on his territory. Well, I really don't think of myself as territory, Josh. And I know Derek wouldn't be upset by my dancing with anyone. Good. So what time is that party for the kids that Morgan was talking about? Three o'clock. Why? Well, I tell Floyd that I'll uh, be here later to talk to him. I think I'm going to try and catch him. I'll see you later. Uh-huh. Ah, no, not quite good. No, mm -hmm. you're right. Hmm? Yeah, I wish you two would make up your mind. I'm being busy up here. Oh. You know, I almost called Tanarika to get some educated help on this party that I tried to volunteer for. <laughs> well, now that I'm back, you know, I'll do anything I can to help. Oh, good. Uh, um, you can both help by giving me a yes or no on the start. Uh, a little, little to the right. right. <laughs> Perfect, right here. <laughs> uh. Come on, let me see. Seriously, what can I do to help? Uh, oh, uh, well, since Kelly is working on this floor now, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could persuade him to sing. Huh? No, I did that once before, and I got in big trouble. Oh, well, then I need, uh, well, I need candy canes and children's books and stuff like that. Maybe you could do some last-minute shopping or something. Sure, I'll go on my way out to Amanda's. I have the car today. Oh, great. Great, that sounds perfect. 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 No, no, oh, no, 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 no,
by the way, I spoke to your sister Maureen, mm -hmm. and I tried to talk her into coming here for Christmas, but she said no. She's got a lot of loose ends, she said, to tie up. And Herbie has already moved out of the house. It's certainly going to be funny not having Nola here for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, my, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I invited Derek and Hillary by tomorrow after dinner. Woo! The more the merrier. Oh! Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Mince, my favorite. Huh? Excuse me. Hey, ow! Ow! Carry mm. right. Would you get that for me, honey? Yeah, sure. You know, Ma, I can hardly wait till you see a look on your face when you open my Christmas present tomorrow. Yeah, I just hope you didn't go overboard, Tony. Ma, you never believed who came by for a visit. Oh, Mrs. Redfield, how nice. I steamed my plum pudding this week, and I wanted to bring one by before the holidays. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. You know, we were just talking about Nola. Have you heard anything from San Francisco? Yes, I talked to Mr. McCord this morning. It seems that he and Nola are taking an early flight out. They should be in Springfield this afternoon. Oh, that's wonderful. Then they're going to be back here for Christmas. Ah, uh, Tony, why don't you take Mrs. Renfield's cake? Well, I, I really shouldn't stay, but perhaps for just a minute. Can I get you some uh, coffee or some tea or something? No, thank you. I will sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Ma? Thank you. Ma, why don't we break open that bottle of sherry that Mr. Fancher donated? Oh, good idea. How'd you like a nice glass of sherry to warm you up, Mrs. Renfield? Huh? A drop might be very nice, then. Good. I'll join you. Ma, how about you? Oh, no, not for me. A little early yet for me. Besides, I had all that champagne at Vanessa's party. Hmm. Vanessa Chamberlain? Uh, well, that's one of Tony's bosses. Um, she gave a party for this friend of hers who lives in Europe, and she's going to San Francisco in the morning. <laughs> You know, Ma, when I was over the hideout this morning, Teresa was telling me that Blanche missed her plane. Seems she was nursing a pretty bad hangover and uh, slept right through the alarm. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It seemed to me she really wanted to get back to San Francisco before Christmas. Well, Trish says she's not going to make it till after New Year's now. Oh. Say when, Mrs. Renfield. When. Thank you. into a dead end. He's probably on his way home. You know, I called uh, Dr. Hunt again, and his service said he's going to be back sometime before the first of the year, so I guess I have at least something to look forward to. Have you had lunch? No, no, I haven't even thought about eating. Well, why don't I run upstairs and see if Carrie will come down and join us for some lunch? All right, but uh, I have a feeling what her answer's going to be. I don't know whether it's Christmas or or being around the children, but I think maybe she softened a little. Jackie, I would really like to believe that. We'll see. Sometimes. Sometimes the, the deepest feelings are, are impossible to verbalize. 
Jackie, I want you to know that I feel really surrounded by love in this house, and I'm very grateful to you for it. And I don't want you to take it personally. You're Justin. If I don't tell you, neither. Justin or I do. But we can't stand by and watch someone we love cut herself off from the help so many people want to give her. Carrie. I have to talk to you about something. I haven't mentioned it to Justin and certainly not to Ross because I knew that it was a very personal moment that I happened to intrude on. What are you talking about? When I came downstairs with Samantha yesterday, you were standing at the Christmas tree. It was almost as if you were, you were talking to someone who was really there. Carrie, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but from what I heard, it, it was as if you were talking to someone you loved once very deeply and were hoping he'd understand what had happened between you and Moss. Jackie, do you think you could forget you ever heard that? It was just walking into this house and, and, and being hit with all the, the Christmas spirit. Jackie, will you promise me that you won't tell Ross? Gary, uh, I love you very much. But I can't promise you that. Because if, it, if it's something that could help Ross get to the truth that could save you, I'd have to tell him. Dr. Piper told me it was the first emotional reaction he's ever seen from her. But when it was over, uh, she withdrew again. Mike, I'm just sorry that you went out there and you ran into another dead end. It may not be, Ross. In fact, I was just getting ready to call you. Uh, Dr. Piper didn't recognize a photograph of Joe Bradley, but he did think there was a chance that Joe might have been here, so let me uh, uh, check through the visiting records for the past few months. Well, listen, did uh, you find Joe's name? No, but I found Carrie's. She's obviously uh, been here several times since she started working for Spalding Enterprises. I also found out that Mrs. McKenzie had another visitor during that time who had an Omaha address, so I copied it down for you. Listen, Mike, I can't thank you enough for this. Yeah. Well, okay, but I'm not finished. I asked Dr. Piper if I could go back through some of the old visitors' records in hopes I could find something more for you. And I think I did. Uh, Diane Ballard came here once to visit Mrs. McKenzie about five years ago. And that's not all. Dr. Piper seemed to recognize the name Diane Ballard when I asked about it. And it seemed that some years ago, Diane gave the nursing home a check to be used for Mrs. McKenzie's care. But as Dr. Piper recalls, and this is backed up by uh, some records, Carrie Anderson was violently opposed to their using any of Diane's money for Mrs. McKenzie and insisted the check be destroyed. In fact, when the head bookkeeper disagreed, Carrie became almost violent and ripped it up herself. in a moment. Can't imagine Blanche being defeated by anything, least of all an airline. Well, she's been pulling every string possible. It's just that with all the holiday traffic, there's not any space. So she's called Mr. Wonderful, whoever he is in San Francisco, to tell him she's going to be here until tomorrow or the next day, which means she's going to be with me. Listen, your Mom's invitation is still open. Why don't you bring her Oh, on? no. I wouldn't oh, dream no. of doing that because... She has a way of saying the wrong thing to the wrong people. I mean, she did it all night last night at the party. Henry seemed to be enjoying himself. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> believe it when my father walked in on Mrs. Reardon's on oh, really. Hello, of course, for Miss Bauer. Yes, he is. Once in a while. <laughs> okay, I'll tell him. That is right, Twenty. Yes, I'm going to tell him. Goodbye, Katie. And that was Katie. She wanted me to remind you that the uh, party for the kids on uh, pediatrics is on three and uh, she expects you. Right, okay. I'm on my way. Listen, you want to come on? See? Sure. Hi, Hi there. there. How are you? Hi there. I didn't expect to see you, especially with Mike out of town. Well, he's just about to arrive and things have slowed down at the office a little bit. You realize this is going to be our first Christmas together? 
Better look forward to one more. I don't feel the same way. Oh, by the way, I talked to Morgan, and she wants us to find time tomorrow to come by and look at their tree and exchange gifts. Oh, good. Yeah. Looks like we'll be getting around quite a bit. The Reardons have invited us over, too. Oh, great. wonder if Nola's going to be back from San Francisco. Well, I have no idea, but I know that B has invited Nola and Mr. McCord if they get back in time. Oh, terrific. I'm uh, sorry to bring you such disappointing news, but I want you to know right away. Well, I'll tell you, I found it hard to believe that a big recording star like Nick Silver would do one of my songs anyway. Come on, boy. It's just a temporary setback. We can't, we can't let it discourage us. I'm not discouraged. It's, well... Maybe Nola was right. I mean, who ever heard of a maintenance supervisor becoming a big songwriter? You don't need that kind of negative thinking for us. Say, listen, I gotta get down to a three to help Katie with that Christmas party for the kids. Fine, fine. I'm heading up there, too. Uh, Morgan mentioned it to me earlier, and I just told her to catch it. Good. Well, I, I gotta get going, or I'm gonna be late, and Katie's gonna have my scalp. Tony, how am I gonna get her to leave? Look, she drank almost half that bottle of I'm sure she's going to leave soon. She's got the driver in the car waiting outside. She's got to go to the airport and pick up Mr. McCord and Nola, right? Mm. Uh, so long, Mrs. Renfield. It was nice seeing you again. And you too, Anthony. Have a very happy holiday. Thanks, I will. cookies or a sandwich or something to go with your wine? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Reardon. I really do have to leave very soon. Oh, I do hope I'm not keeping you from anything. Oh, no. I'm just happy to have a chance to repay your hospitality for a change. Mr. McCord is very fond of Nola's family. He's, he's really a family man. Uh, he's a very unusual man in a lot of ways. And I'm very grateful to him. He's been so nice to Nola. It's a relief for me, you know, with a baby coming in a few months. Mrs. Reardon, I don't mean to pry. But Nola is so reluctant to talk about the baby's father. Mr. McCord feels very strongly that the father of the child should be assuming some of the responsibility now. Well, uh... Mrs. Renfield, Nola does not like discussing this, even with me. But I can tell you that the baby's father is more than willing to take his share of the responsibility. It's just that Nola is set on doing it herself. I assume you're acquainted with the young man. Yes. He is uh, a very hard-working young man. I'm sure he's going to be very successful someday. Uh, I forgot the cookies you baked for the kids at the hospital. Oh, dear. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got some more here. Hold on. Uh, would you do me a favor, honey? And would you give these to Kelly? She's, sure. I baked his favorites. He used to love them when he lived here. And I'm afraid if Nola comes back tomorrow, he's not going to want to drop by. Yeah. yeah, I'll make sure you get some. Bye. Welcome. Hey, welcome. Oh, Okay. Boy, ma'am, you knocked those kids out. They loved it. They loved it. Well, uh, Dr. Bauer's Christmas story is a hard act to follow. It really got to me when I started looking at all the kids' faces. It started me thinking about, you know, soon I'll have my own. Okay, now let's capture Okay, can everybody hear me? Listen, Santa, you listen? Santa will be here going to pay us a visit pretty soon, okay? But before he does, uh, I'd like to put a friend of mine on the spot just a little bit. He's um, <laughs> he to be working on this floor right now, and last year he sang at a Christmas party that this little lady that he's standing next to, which is now his wife, arranged to hello, Kelly. Yeah. So I think <laughs> if we gave him a nice round of applause, he might sing for us today. Oh. Oh. Well, either way, you're not getting out of it this time. Come on. Thanks. Thanks, okay. My wife and I would like to sing oh, this right. Christmas. Uh, Linda, could you help us out on the piano? Do you sing? Um, I'd like to sing a song for you. Now it's Christmas time. I'm a teacher. <laughs>
Christmas once again. It seems like only yesterday. We put away the stars. Time flies, cause here we are. So warm, one family. children play building snowmen every place I felt so good inside the tear rolled down my face my heart and soul just cried I know it's frustrating for you. Yes. You know, I found out something. The Chamberlains were uh, closer to Joe Bradley than I had ever imagined. I mean, they were the ones that were footing the bill for Diane's investigation. Why? I don't know. Uh, she was uh, putting some pressure on them. They were trying to get some information whereby they could exert a little pressure on her. Matter of fact, they had Joe Bradley on retainer, and he was doing all sorts of uh, little services for both Vanessa and Henry Champion. Mm. Well, I'm going to take this tray into the kitchen and fix us all some tea. All right. So did you know that there are presents underneath this tree for every one of us, and they're from Carrie? Presents? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I wonder where she uh, ever found the time. I don't know. It's just another mystery. I've always thought of Carrie as the least complicated woman I'd ever known. Goes to show you how wrong one can be. Justin, 
until my trial, and, and you'll no doubt be spending a lot of time here. I wonder if we could make a little agreement not to talk about Diane or Joe or... No, 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 damn it, I'm not a... I'm not gonna agree to any such thing. I mean, maybe you have given up on every dream we've ever had, but I haven't. I can't. Now, I told you recently that with or without your help, I was gonna find the answers to save you. I know those answers are there. They're buried in your past. Joe Bradley found out enough information to realize that you were the one that was with Diane Ballard that night. And if Joe Bradley can start putting the pieces together, then so can I. Ross, the answers that you're looking for aren't going to change the fact that I pushed Diane. And that in a, in a struggle for the gun, I killed Joe Bradley. I know you far too well to accept that as just cold facts. Mike Bauer went to uh, Milwaukee as a favor for me. He's there to find out more information about an elderly woman who's a patient at the Thompson nursing home. He found out quite a bit, actually. It appears that uh, Diane Ballard was also very close to a Mrs. Edward McKenzie. No, she wasn't, and that's why I... That's why what? You know, the only thing I can think of now is that you lied to me. You also lied to Lieutenant Wyatt. When he asked you about never being that close to Diane Ballard when the two of you worked together all those years I ago in Omaha. I will lie to you, and I will not lie to you. The only thing that I will do, Ross, is beg you, please, just stop what you're doing. Well, Carrie, I am not going to stop what I'm doing. Carrie! Carrie, we... Ross! What's wrong? I don't know. I just can't seem to get through to her at all. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I excused myself and went into the kitchen because I, I was hoping she'd want to... Yes, I was talk. hoping that she would come down and talk to me. Oh, oh. oh hello, darling. How's the hand? Okay. Oh. Well, how was the party for the children? It was pretty good. Pretty bad was there. How's it going? Not well. I damn near lost my temper with Carrie when she tried to tell me in a slightly different way just to give it all up again. Well, I know how frustrating it must be for you, Ross. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Merry Christmas! Hi. 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 I just wanted to drop these presents off. Oh. Here, Jackie, let me, let me put them over here. Thank you, Mike. Oh, you told me the good news. Mr. Ben's coming back next week. You must be thrilled. I certainly am. I got a cable from Italy confirming it. He's going to be back before the first of the year. That's the best Christmas present I could have gotten. Oh, Hello, Hello, Philip. I'm Mike. Merry Christmas, Justin. Merry Christmas, Mike. Good to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ross. I uh, got something for you. Good. Got the uh, name and address of that guy who visited uh, Mr. McKenzie, the one from Omaha. Oh, thank you. There you go. Sorry I couldn't do for more for you. That's all right. I'm just... Where he went? Which man? You recognize that name? That's not the name, it's the address. It's the name. Hey, look at this. It's the same address as the private investigator that Joe Bradley hired in Omaha. Now, this guy must have used a uh, phony name in order to get into the nursing home. Yeah. I know you must be going through a pretty hard time right now, too, with Alan's hearing and his confession on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Well, I'm only worried about how it's going to turn out. I'm very proud of my dad. I had a long talk with Carrie about it, and she said that he had a lot of courage just to come out and confess like that. Mike, uh, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thanks, Justin. I just, uh, I have a lot to do before I go back to my mother, so I just want to come by and wish everybody Merry okay. Christmas. Will, uh, Alan and Hope be there at birth? Uh, I don't, uh, think so. So, anyway, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mike. Michael, thank you. Well, Mike, sure. yeah, I'd like to talk to you before you leave. Sure, Philip. Huh? Um... At the same time my dad told me about Roger Thorpe and all those tapes, he also mentioned that he lied to me about things you did. Well, that uh, took a lot of courage, didn't it? Well, I just want to um, thank you for the things you said about him that Ross told me that could help him out. I just wanted to make sure the truth came out. Well, I just want to say I'm sorry for blaming you for things I now know weren't true. Well, thank you, Philip. Suppose we just start 1982 with a fresh slate. I like that. 
Merry Christmas, Mike. Merry Christmas, Philip. The Young and the Restless wishes you a peaceful holiday filled with the love and light of the season. And on As the World Turns... David, do you want to come home? What guarantees are there that I won't break down again? Our love will give you strength. I know it will. Then on Search for Tomorrow, Liza and Travis share a special Christmas. We hope yours is, too. Special Christmas. Happy holidays from all of us here at CBS. Listen, when we get back tonight, we'll help you trim the tree, so stay up for us, okay? okay. And don't let Mr. Fancher and Mrs. Peterson anywhere near to we'll end up with lovebirds all over the house like Floyd and Ola's wedding. Sorry, Floyd. That's okay, Tony. I mean, that's all in the past now. There's no reason to pretend that it didn't happen. When I talked to Nola on the phone, she made a point of asking me to tell you that she felt fine, not to worry, and that she's going to see um, Dr. Sedgwick as soon as she comes Good. Let's go. All right. I have a good time. Bye, Ma. Have fun, everybody. Bye. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. You know, I didn't think Dad and Hope would come. I mean, they've got so much on their minds. Oh, I was pretty sure Alan would get by, by before Christmas. I'm very proud of the way you handled yourself, darling. Well, I really didn't know what to say. No, you handled it just right by not mentioning it. I'm sure Alan and Hope are trying to forget about it until next week. Uh, listen, uh, I'm going over to Carrie's. Lieutenant Wyatt gave me the okay to go through some more of her things in hopes that I can find another lead. Well, uh, I was just about to start dinner. Well, that's all right. You go ahead and don't wait for me. Matter of fact, uh, perhaps if I'm not here, Carrie may come down to join you. All right, see we'll see you later. Yeah. Okay. Hello? Jackie, it's Bert. I mean, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just got a call from Emily. said that uh, she and Alan had gone over to your place. Oh, yes, they brought some presents over for Philip. But they left just a few minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed them. Well, do you happen to know if they were going straight home? All I can tell you is that Alan said they had more presents to deliver. Oh, oh all right. Jackie, how did they seem? Oh, huh? I thought they acted very calm and collected, considering what they're both facing. Well, Jackie, I wish that you and Justin could be with us tonight, but I do hope you have a wonderful evening. Goodbye, dear. And Merry Christmas. Well, he said he was going to try to get here right after his meeting. Oh, good. Did uh, Jackie say how Carrie's doing? You know, I forgot to ask her. I was so anxious to get hold of Hope and Alan and try to persuade them to, to at least stop by here. Tonight. I know that would make Mike very happy, certainly. Sure would. This is just the kind of Christmas I've always wanted to be a part of. I'm glad you're here to share it with me. It's such a different Christmas than it was last year, thanks to you. You don't have to thank me for anything. So when's Ben coming back? Oh, well, at his table, he said sometime before the New Year. I can't oh. wait. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Mike, did you hear if um, Hope and Alan are going to be able to make it this evening? Oh, Amanda saw Hope and Alan uh, earlier at uh, Marley's. Oh. Yeah. Well, they probably know where she felt. That's good. So how were they? Oh, I didn't really talk to them since I was on my way out. Speaking of Jennifer, when they arrived, uh, I think we, our decorations oh, were terrific. No. And thank you too for for singing today. It was terrific. Oh, yeah. oh, I was glad too, as long as I could rope my wife into doing it with me. Yeah, I didn't realize Morgan was so talented. I guess that's just part of getting to know somebody. <laughs> hey, Jim, I yeah. hope you can make it by uh, Beast tomorrow. There should be quite a gang there. I'll be there. Great. Listen, we plan to come there, too, because we want to thank uh, B for making all those cookies. Oh, good. I'm glad you're going to be coming, because uh, Nola and her boss are planning to come, too. <laughs> Freddie, I'm so glad I'm going to get a chance to know you while you're home for the holiday. Oh, thanks. You know, your father has become very important to me, so I hope you and I can be very good friends while we're here. Now, before I put out the buffet, I'm going to ask Michael to sing for us. It's a oh, Christmas tradition that we have in the family, isn't it, dear? Yeah. Good. I'm anxious to learn all the Bauer traditions. Uh -oh. Michael? Michael? Mm -hmm. Sarah has agreed to play, and so now you can sing for us. 
No, it, uh, we're all having a good time. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> God. Excuse me, I better get that. So, uh... It's easy. I don't know why. Oh, oh, sweetheart. I'm so happy to see you. Merry, Merry Christmas, Alan. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Alan talked to me about coming over. Excuse me, could I um, be excused from minute? Sure. Thank of course, you. Alan. <laughs> Alan and I spent the whole afternoon talking today, and I came over here primarily to thank you for testifying at this hearing. Well, I just wanted to tell the truth. Well, that's lovely for us. Why don't we just put everything that's happened behind us? And I, I'd like us both to start on a new footing this year. There's nothing I'd like better. <laughs> I love you very much. Oh, Dad, I love you, too. Merry Christmas, Mike. Merry Christmas, Helen. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing home. Well, it's a family night, so we're all part of the same family. I just promised Mom I was going <clears> to... <throat> <laughs> sing. Oh, please, please do. <laughs> of course, Dad. It wouldn't be New Christmas Eve without you singing. Uh, uh, well, Alan, mm -hmm. how was the baby? Sleeping peacefully, thank you. Which is a bit too hard. South Southwest and Barney's. Furs by the Christie Brothers.